Dr. Danny Kamein is a specialist in gut health and colorectal cancer. He's gathered together everything we need to turn pork into bacon, the nation's and my favorite processed meat. Hi there. Hi, Michael. We're going to cure some bacon. Um, I'll give you the, right. I've I'll never give you done the gloves. This <laughs> OK, so we've got some uh, sea salt, and we need 12 teaspoons of it. 12, let me. OK. 12 teaspoons of it. Yeah. Certainly, so when you make it yourself, you realize how much salt there is in it. Yeah, that's right. Sugar, yeah. how much? So five teaspoons of uh, sugar. And we've just got uh, curing salt, uh, which contains our sodium nitrite. Um, OK, it's not encouraging. It says um, toxic if not used correctly. And how much of this stuff? I'll be careful with it. Just one, one teaspoon. And then presumably you just mix it up, yeah? That's right, yeah. OK. And then we're going to massage it into our, into our meat to get, mix it well in, try and get it into all the cracks and, and crannies on the meat. Once the cure is applied, the meat will need to be refrigerated to cure for about seven days. The first thing you notice is just how much salt is involved in the process. The salt is, is obviously uh, not great for us. It's uh, related to hypertension, which is a leading cause of, of cardiovascular disease. But it's not just the salt that can cause problems. There's also the sodium nitrite I added, which is often used in the curing process. So what is it about the sodium nitrite? What does it do? The nitrite, is, it's, it's very good for the meat. It, it kills the bacteria in the meat. It stops us getting uh, botulism. Um, however, in the stomach environment, it's believed that some of that nitrite reacts with amino acids, the building blocks of protein, mm -hmm. um, to form what we call nitrosamines. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe that these are quite chemically reactive. Um, and when they make their way down into the gastrointestinal tract, um, they can start interacting with, with DNA in cells and tissues, uh, and, and that is what we believe um, initiates the cancer process. OK, and how strong is the evidence of a direct link between nitrites and cancer? It's a very complicated picture. Um, uh, we believe that it may contribute, but we want to understand why, um, and this is one potential mechanism. So nitrites are still only a suspect we have yet to establish a direct link between them and colorectal cancer. And nitrites are not the only part of the curing process that researchers wonder about. There we go. We have lift off. <laughs> when meat is smoked, it's often done in massive cold stores. We're doing it on a much more intimate scale. One of the things that we do to flavor meat um, is we smoke it. Um, and the same chemicals that we generate when we, when we smoke cigarettes, things called polyaromatic hydrocarbons, are generated in the smoking process. These chemicals, known as PAHs, stick to the meat. And when we eat it, they can be absorbed by the body. They can react in, in a very similar way to the nitrosamines with, with DNA um, through our gastrointestinal tract. Um, and might be another potential mechanism whereby red and processed meats increase our risk of, of gastrointestinal cancers. Like nitrites, PAHs are still only potential suspects when it comes to finding a link between processed meat and cancer. Still, I'm starting to see why processed meat has such a bad reputation. <laughs>